Joining me now, one of my favorites of all time. He is Brian Baldinger. Baldy, one of the best NFL uh, analysts in the business. One of my partners in crime at NFL Network. Played for the Cowboys, the Colts, and the Eagles. Called games for Fox. He's calling games on the radio. He's calling games on TV. Does college football. Does NFL. Baldy, you're everywhere. What are you doing right now at this very moment? I just got done studying Stephon Gilmore. Uh, right now, Helly. Um, he's the best corner in football right now, and, I, and I'm trying to think if he's the best since Darrell Revis was in his prime because that's how he's playing the game right now. And he's a big cornerstone to the best defense in this league by far and maybe the best defense we've seen in a long time. I'm glad you brought that up because we talked about this a little bit earlier. This team, this, this, this is Tom Brady's team, but it's driven by the defense, very similar to those early Super Bowl winning teams with Brady that had Brewski and Willie and Vrabel on them. You talked about this linebacking core, and you compared the linebacking core to the Golden State Warriors. Why? (laughs) Well, because they they really – they, they really play multiple – all of them play multiple positions. It doesn't matter if we're talking about uh, Jamie Collins right now who leads the team in tackles or Dante Hightower or Kyle Van Noy or uh, Roberts. Or, you know, I mean, John Simon right now. I mean, they, they, they played every linebacker on the roster last night. And they, they, they can play inside. They can play outside. They can stand up. They can rush. They can run twist stunts. I mean, I, I compared them because Golden State – has sort of defined what positionless basketball is, where anybody can handle the ball, anybody can run the break, and that's kind of how right now New England is playing defense. I mean, there's such interchangeable parts that you really can't key on one guy right now. Dan Helley filling in for Rich Eisen on the Rich Eisen Show with Brian Baldinger on the phone right now, allowing 6.8 points per game going into last night, one offensive touchdown allowed tonight. You, you said it's the best defense we've seen in a long time. Could this be the best since the 85 Bears? I, I, I know they don't have kind of the, the headliners, the big names, but Stephon Gilmore certainly falls in that category. Well, he does. I mean, you got to think about, you know, the Ravens of 2001. Um, you know, they were a great defense, and they were probably the best since the Bears. And I played on some Eagle teams with – in 91 and 92, which was the best in football. But right now, I mean, if you just look at them, I mean, they're literally number one statistics on every single category except for run defense. But, I mean, they lead the league in takeaways and interceptions and sacks. They have 25 sacks right now, Dan, in the first six games. I mean, just prorate that. And you're going to hit somewhere around the 70 numbers right now. And they just do the best job right now of marrying their coverage with the variety of twist stunts in the way that they rush the passer. They might not have a guy on the team that gets double digits in sacks. They, they rarely do. But they don't care about that. I mean, the linebackers have 16 of the 25 sacks. They'll, there's more than enough to go around with it, the way that they basically make the quarterback hold the ball the way we saw Dan, Daniel Jones hold the ball last night. But it's been every single week they make the quarterback hold the ball. And they'll play just sticky, tight man coverage with the robber in the middle of the field, a variety of coverages. But the foundation is man coverage with twist stunts up front. They took down everybody in the postseason last year, shutting out Patrick Mahomes in that first half, keeping the Rams to three points. And it's all carried on into this season. The other undefeated team in the NFL right now, the San Francisco 49ers. Big game for the 49ers this weekend here in L.A., taking on the three and two Rams San Francisco, Baldy, the only team in the NFL with a top five total offense, scoring offense, top five total defense, scoring defense. This is the 49er team we've been waiting to see since Kyle Shanahan got in town. It is. Um, and, and look, they lead the league in rushing. And I think, you know, the run game coordinator, Mike McDaniels, is a guy that has filed Kyle Shanahan everywhere he's ever been, starting in Houston, Washington, to Cleveland, to Atlanta, and now out to L.A. And he's kind of a genius in there. And the way that they run the ball is kind of genius. Now, they're going to be without really key components this week. So they'll be shorthand, no Kyle Juchek, uh, no Mike McGlinchey. You know, Joe Staley has been out for three weeks. So, you know, I mean, they're, i got to see how they do it now against a Rams defense that, you know, has struggled quite a bit. Uh, you know, especially going back to Tampa Bay and then against against Seattle. So maybe, you know, and, they, and they've lost key players too. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, they're the number one rush defense, uh, rushing offensive football right now, Dan. But, you know, that defense line, you know, it was just um, – it was like Shark Week 
uh, last Monday night <laughs> against the Cleveland uh, Browns. I mean, Baker Mayfield was a piece of chum, and they got after him. And that's what John Lynch has been building. I mean, they've been you know drafting defensive linemen high for a long time, and now they got them all on the field healthy right now. And if they – if you can't run the ball and bounce it out and do some things and you let that defensive line just feast, I mean, they'll get after Jared Goff if, if they can't bounce it out. And I think Sean McVay knows that. Yeah, I can't wait to see that game. If they, if they beat the Rams, and I know this isn't the same Rams team, at least not yet, that they were last year, do you have to start calling the 49ers one of the top two, three teams in the NFC? Well, you've got you to put them in, that, you know, in the playoff hunt. I mean, if you if they could get to five and zero, oh, I mean they're going to be in that playoff picture, and you know they're doing things that they have never done under Kyle Shanahan. They're taking the ball away. I mean they had seven takeaways all of last year. They have more than that right now. Uh, they couldn't intercept the ball last year. I mean they're doing that, and that all starts up front. But yes, I mean you could definitely if they're five and zero oh and they go through what they've just done. You know whether it's Cleveland on Monday night and the Rams this this weekend, Dan. I mean they're certainly one of the top three or four teams in the NFC. I have to ask you about the Rams. I don't want to focus too much on this game, but to me, this is the most interesting game of the weekend. For the first time in the McVay era, it just feels like there's uncertainty with this Rams offense. The offensive line is struggling. Todd Gurley, we don't know what the situation is in terms of him playing this week because of the quad. Jared Goff has 10 giveaways more than any other quarterback in the NFL this year. When you're breaking down the tape, what are you seeing that's not going right for this Rams offense right now? Well, they're not getting the big chunk plays that they're used to getting. Um, I mean, they've been up to top two or three in the league in big chunk plays, and they're not getting those. Um, and then I think right now, I think there's just a huge disparity. I mean, they've, run, they've thrown the ball over 100 times more than they've run it in the first five weeks of the season. We saw it. You know, when Jared Goff threw the ball well over 60 times against Tampa. Now, they were playing from behind, but, I mean, they ran the ball 11 times that day. And so they've gotten away from Todd Gurley and and all the things that Todd Gurley has been known for since Sean McVay got there. You know, I mean, just been a great all-around player. And he has not been that type of player right now. I mean, he's not a big part of their passing game. In fact, he's averaging less than five yards a catch. And we're used to seeing big screens and all that. Now, they're, they're replacing two offensive linemen. Um, you know, from a year ago in a Super Bowl run, and an offense line that started the same line for 19 straight weeks in a season. I'm not putting anything on what they're getting from Brian Allen at center or Joseph Nopum at left guard, but they're not the same group up front right now. And I think the quarterback has struggled a little bit when they're putting it all on him to throw it all around the yard to win these games. And he's, you know, you mentioned the 10 turnovers. That's, that's far too many from that position. Brian Baldinger joining the Rich Eisen Show. Dan Helley filling in for Rich now. Baldy, uh, on your Baldy's breakdown, she focuses a little bit on the Saints. Our producer, Don Bowie, big Saints fan. I think he wanted me to ask a, a Saints question here, so I'm going to go ahead and yeah. uh, do that. Teddy Bridgewater, I'm, I'm driving big, in. Yeah, I'm, a big Don Bu- I'm a big Don Bowie fan. So Bowie's we, the best. We go way back. Bowie's so, the yeah. best. Uh, I, I'm driving in. I'm listening to a little sports talk radio, and I hear all these guys, and Bridgewater's been great. Listen, he hasn't lost the game, but I don't – I don't think Bridgewater's been great. I think he played better his last game. Bridge is Bridgewater a starting NFL quarterback right now? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, way he played last week, he is. But they, they, but the Saints. I mean, you go back to the win in Seattle. You know, you you go back to what they did against Dallas. You you look back at what they did last week. Um, you know, they they define what a team is all about. I mean, the offensive line pitched a shutout last week. Um, you know, they, they, I mean, literally, Teddy Bridgewater wasn't hit. I mean, that's Shaq Barrett coming in who leads the league in sacks with nine and forced fumbles and all that stuff, and he didn't, you know, he wasn't even breathing on Teddy Bridgewater. They shut him out. You know, and then Michael Thomas looked like Michael Thomas last week. I mean, he's unstoppable. He's, his Twitter handle is can't guard Mike, and they couldn't guard Mike. And Alvin Kamara is an un, just an unselfish player. The fullback, Zach Line is an unselfish player. And defensively, they might be the best defense line of football all around. I mean, when you talk about shutting down Ezekiel Elliott for less than two yards of carry two weeks ago, uh, you go and see how they defended Russell Wilson in Seattle. You go and look at, uh, you know, how they just completely dominated the line of scrimmage last week against Tampa. Um, you know, and then you look at Marshawn Lattimore, you know, he, he wants to go match up against the best. He did it against Amari Cooper, shut him down. Uh, he went up against Mike Evans and others last week, they shut him down. So right now, 
um, their defense is playing as well as anybody in football, including the Patriots. But so it's just a total team effort. And and you go, okay, no no Drew Brees, no problem, because they really define what a team is all about. Everybody has stepped up. Everybody has improved uh, as a team since Drew Brees went down. Yeah, it's really impressive what they've been able to do. And it, I, I think it just goes to show how important backup QBs are, right? We've, we oh, haven't seen it I, I mean, in, in recent history like we have this year. You know, 10 different backup quarterbacks have started a game this year through week five. The most intriguing to me, I, I think you know where I'm going here, Baldy. Gardner Minshew, he's two yep. and two. The whole, the whole deal, the stash, the outfits, the swag. And Kyle Allen, who hasn't lost a game, both are top 10 in passer rating. Minshew has nine touchdown passes in a pick this year. Kyle Allen hasn't thrown an interception in three starts. I got an up close and look at Kyle Allen. I called his game against mm-hmm. the Cardinals. Which one of these guys, if you had to roll the rest of the way with one of them, Minshew or Allen, which one would you choose? Uh... Gosh, you know, the, the reason why I'm even hesitating, I mean, I think the obvious one is Minshew. But the reason why I'm even hesitating is what North Turner has done and allowed for Kyle Allen to succeed. Now, you saw him against the Cardinals and calling that game at Fox. Dan, you know, you, you saw that touchdown pass before the end of the first half to D.J. Moore. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he rifled that ball in the middle of the field in the jaws of the Arizona defense and hit Moore in stride. And he can finish as well as anybody in this business in stride with his, with his speed and with his strength. 52 yards later, I mean, they had the Cardinals. I mean, it was over. But if you look at what North Turner is doing right now, I mean, you can easily say and make a case, you know, that Christian McCaffrey is the MVP of this business. And he leads the league in rushing. He leads the league in total yards from scrimmage. And, you know, North Turner is doing a great job of just game planning and basically calling plays to get – Christian McCaffrey just isolated in space like he did on the 18-yard touchdown pass last week. He's just isolated against Miles Jack. And Kyle Allen, you know, throws a, a five-yard pass. McCaffrey finishes it in the paint. Um, Norv is really doing a great job, I think, with Kyle. He's not, he's not forcing the ball down the field. He's not putting him in bad positions. And so they'll get tested this week. You know, and they'll have a rematch game with Tampa Bay. And we'll find out a little bit more about Kyle Allen. But Minshew's been unbelievable. He really has. I mean, that comeback win in Denver – I played in Denver seven times, Dan. I never won a game up there. I mean, that place is impossible to play in. It's just, it's, it's loud. You can't breathe. You get tired quickly. I mean, he goes up there and has a comeback win against Denver. And I know what Denver is and all that stuff. But still, it's impressive to see what he is doing and what he continues to do. He had a chance to win that game last week all the way to the very end. So, uh, you know, it, it, it – it, the backup quarterbacks, I mean, that's the, the, one of the big themes of this season. And I think a lot of teams are going to go, gosh, I wish we would have invested in a guy like Trady Bridgewater or drafted a guy like, you know, Gardner Minshew. And, you know, because we're going to see more guys go down before the season's out. Yeah, we could see another backup quarterback uh, getting some run for the Steelers. Quickly, Baldy, before we let you go, I, I just want to put you on the spot here. The way too early MVP vote, vote you mentioned Christian McCaffrey. Uh, let's go McCaffrey, Mahomes, or Russell Wilson. Who do you have? Can we flip a three-headed coin? I mean, <laughs> you can't really – I mean, I'm going to see Mahomes this week against Houston. Now, we just saw him been held to 13 points by the Colts. Did a good job of playing keep away and running the ball and keep him off the field. But I have a feeling he's going to bounce back awfully fast this weekend. Uh, but, I mean, Russell Wilson was so good the last time we saw him uh, that you almost have to say Russell Wilson at this point with what uh, Seattle is doing. Yeah, I think you're right. Just kind of what he's working with and what he's lost. Russell Wilson continues to get it done. Baldy, what game are you doing this weekend? Uh, I will be in Kansas City. We'll see uh, a great shootout between Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Oh, I love it. I love it. We don't have time to get to that, but that's another game we're going to focus on a little bit later in the show. Baldy, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate the time. Great to talk to you, brother. Anytime, man. All All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. That's Brian Baldinger, one of the very best in the business. For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.